Psychological Association says that 63% of Americans are under a significant source of stress and this beats out money uh, just slightly and it slightly just beats out work so if you think about all three of these things this really has to do with our, our livelihood at being at stake and living a meaningful life and that's something that we all want to do so if we think about stress what's happening in the world today is that we are having our emotions triggered. We're having emotional triggers pop up and, and woken up. We're having our values stepped on with all of this news happening in the world. And I was just listening to your previous segment about gun control. I can hear your passion around that. So, and then also just being out of alignment with what our natural algorithms are. Each of us has a natural algorithm. And with all of the news exposure that's happening in the world, it's really causing us to get out of alignment and move away from who we are as individuals. And it just, it's, it's like, I, I like to equate it to this. It's like you're a car and you're ste constantly stepping on the brakes, trying to slow down all of these things. Well, after a while, those brake pads are going to wear down. You're going to get down to the rotors and pretty soon you're not going to be able to stop. And it just causes this emotional explosion to happen in all of us. So yeah, it's a pretty serious problem. And Angela, not only you know stress, I mean, you were somebody who spent three years in Iraq as a defense contractor, right? Yes, exactly. And, you know, one thing that I like to say is that our, the news that we're having now really isn't new. It's just more exposed. And I, I realized that when 9-11 happened and I made a decision to go over voluntarily as an HR defense contractor because I wanted to support, I wanted to do something. I didn't want to just sit back and talk about it but when I was in that war zone it was amazing to me that all of the things that we're experiencing over here in the United States that was going on that was already going on you just really didn't hear uh, as much about it you would hear some things and some things were blown out of proportion but there was definitely a lot of danger a lot of stress um, I was one of 16 females over there so it was a really difficult Time, I encountered some pretty serious um, opposition to being there as a woman and you want to talk about somebody who was under stress I was that person and I, I learned everything that I learned if I didn't know anything before I learned it all there <laughs> and you before that you had a successful career in corporate America you were yes. in companies like with, with um, Northrop Grumman and KBR and Roche and you have become an entrepreneur CEO and consultant and you've done so many you founded the corporate talent institute so many things you're doing and this book which is why I'm so glad that you were coming on today because you're somebody who obviously knows stress each one of us has been battling it I mean if you if you are feeling a little bit of a love handle on your waistline you're stress eating people <laughs> that's what are happening so knowing stress is one thing knowing that we're stressed out is one thing but what can we actually do 
feel about it. And that's one of the things your book talks about, pinpointing it and actually figuring out how to do something about it. How can you, how do, what can we look forward to in your book? Absolutely. One of the things that I talk about is that we're overly stimulated and we're overly productive. And we, ha we tend to focus on everything happening around us. We tend to be reactive to our environment. When the thing is, we need to turn that attention back to ourselves. We're not going to solve world peace. We've got to change ourselves first, and then the rest of the world will start to change in our eyes. So one thing that I talk about doing is managing your four pillars. And this is your emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual pillars. You hit the nail on the head when you talked about emotional eating. One of the first things that we tend to do when we're stressed is we eat. The next thing that we have a tendency to do is drink. And what um, what the Journal of Alcoholism well, says, on, yeah, I okay. I want to I want to give a little bit of tease. I want to come right back. And okay. I have a very 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 quick break. I want you to tell us more about that okay. and what we can do. Come right back. Hold your thought one second. You're listening to the Laura Coach Show on Sirius XM Urban View. Welcome back to Laura Coach Show here on Sirius XM Urban View Channel One Twenty Six. Before the break, we're talking about the course the horrific shooting that took place in Sutherland Springs at the hands of Devin Patrick Kelly, where at least 26 people were killed. We're talking about the issue of gun control in this country and that powerful statement by Senator Chris Murphy out of Connecticut. And of course, it's led us all to knowing about the stress that we have in our personal lives, along with what's happening in the world around us. And we're just talking to Angela Nuttall, author of Compose Your Soul, How to Turn Your Daily Chaos into Calm Control. Go to composeyoursoul.com and go to angelanuttall.com. And Angela, before the break, you were telling us about the idea of how we oftentimes deal with stress. We know what it looks like, but then we, we deal with it either through eating or drinking or other ways. And what can we be done about that? So the, the first thing that you need to do is come back to yourself and focus on your life and your span of control. So this means that you really got to assess who you are. Your natural algorithm is what I call it. It's the way that you like to operate in life. And so many times stress takes us away from that. We find ourselves misaligning with who we are as people. So that's the first step. The second thing is to take control and manage those four personal pillars that I mentioned before the break. Your emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual pillars. And in Compose Your Soul, I show you exactly how to do that. I take you through a process. And really the book is like a coaching package in a book. And that's what I've been told. And it's, it especially resonates with women because... Women are, they're just wired differently. They're, they're wired to process emotion first and intuition. And so they, they have a tendency to take things in um, more deeply and listen to the inner critics that are talking to them. And so, you know, that's, that's just, uh, you know, one of the things to deal with in terms of dealing with your stress. And one thing that I say, what I tell people is, if you are stressing over something that you have absolutely no control over, that is a choice that you're making and you need to choose differently. You've got to reframe the way that you are looking at the world and that really starts with you. And so many people stay in victim mode and resort to just complaining and, and repeating this snowballing cycle of negativity which creates a lot of self-toxicity. What you're doing is you're killing yourself. So this issue about health care, we're, we're making the problem worse by just causing this stress to just snowball in our lives when we really have the choice to take that back and take our lives back and live a meaningful life. Yeah, that concept of stress being a choice and about this being largely, you know, self-inflicted wounds that happen and the way that we perceive things. You know, my mother used to always say, don't spend your time hating people because half the people don't know and the other half don't care. Right. It's, really, it's really a choice that you have to make to invite these sorts of negativity into your life. But, you know, then we are often, you know, um, bombarded in many ways. Um, Angela, we're bombarded sometimes by things we can't control. We, we turn yeah. on the television and, of course, we are bombarded with things that are happening in the world around us and we feel as human beings we have to confront and deal with them. But your book also talks about the impact of of how you can turn things that even aren't choices that you make, how you can perceive them, how you can deal with them, and how you can resolve them to actually have, you know, your, you be full again. Right. We absolutely have the power to reframe the way that we're viewing the world. And we also have the power to limit the number of times we turn on the TV. Many times we're just inviting negativity into our lives. It's just leaking out of today's, all of the, um, 
media sources that are out there and we're soaking it up like a sponge. So we have the power to say, you know, I'm going to limit that. I'm only going to I'm only going to turn on the news this time and this time and you can start to take control that way. But I always say that, you know, if it doesn't mean that you should remain powerless and you're not able to do anything. You can make a choice. For example, you were talking about gun control and yeah, I mean people who feel passionately about that and you feel so passionately that you can do something, you're probably being called to a mission to do something positive about that. So you've got to be either willing to step into that calling that you're being called to do and do something positive, or you've got to step back and look at, okay, let me get myself back in alignment here. Let me get back in alignment with my values and try to impact the people that are closest to me within my reach and this is where people they drop off because they choose to just sit they they choose to just keep going on a hamster wheel and get stuck in the in the wilderness of life and wander around and just complain and blame and never do anything productive those are the people that get into trouble and get get very toxic within themselves Angela this is why I watch Bravo TV <laughs> Yeah. You cannot watch until the point. You, you can't. You also cannot invite somebody else to stress. I always joke with my girlfriends like, my phone. I, you know, I, I'm blessed with with family and friends, but my phone does not ring for someone to dump their problems on my phone. That, that does not happen, and I, I rebuke it. I say, no, you cannot be here. But Angela, your book is so important, and I'm glad that you wrote it. It's called Compose Your Soul: How to Turn Your Daily Chaos into Calm Control. Go to composeyoursoul.com or visit her site at Angela Nettle and. U-T-T-L-E.com. Get a copy of it. Don't let yourself fall victim to all of the stress factors and having your algorithm totally thrown off. Because, you guys, you can't pour from an empty, empty cup. It's just not going to happen. And so thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate the discussion. Laura, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Take care. All right. Uh, for a quick mental reprieve.